Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your 11th CSS animation tutorial and in this video I'm going to show you how we can animate a pop-up. <laughs> Alright then dudes, so now we know the basics of animation, it's time to kind of take those skills and apply them to some practical examples we might use on a website. So, the first one is this pop-up. Now, I've gone into web examples right here and opened up this popup.html file and this style.css file which is there now. Now this HTML is pretty simple, I've just got a div with an idea pop-up, then I've got this image at the top, then this container contains all of this stuff right here, a H1, a P tag, um, an input right here, a button, and then the cross up there as well. Now I've got some CSS for this, which I'm not going to go into too much because um, that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to show you how to animate things. But if you want to download these files, you can get those from a GitHub page and just go through this yourself. Obviously, if you have any questions about it, feel free to ask. But uh, yeah, basically that's just styling this to look like it is on the page. So if you scroll down a little bit, you can see this little comment where I've got pop-up animation styles and we're going to pop all our stuff right there. Don't worry about this stuff for now, that's all for a later tutorial. Okay, so first thing I want to show you actually on this CSS is the pop-up ID, which is near the top. And you can see there it's got a top value of 200 pixels. That's just bringing it down from the top of the page by 200 pixels, I think. Is that the one? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So what I want to do is actually hide this off the screen to begin with. So I'm going to get that pop up again. And I could apply it to the stuff up there, but I want to keep all the stuff that we're doing together down here below this comment. So this pop up, I now want to give a top value of minus 400 pixels instead. And that's going to scoot it way off the page, right? Cool. Now then, what I want to do is create some animation effects for this pop-up. So we'll create our keyframes, we'll say at keyframes, and we'll call this drop, because what we want to do is let this pop-up drop down here onto the page, right? So we'll call it drop, and then we're going to use the percentages again that we looked at in the last tutorial. So we'll say at 0%, at the start of the animation, right, nothing actually happens yet. You know, we don't want to do anything with it. So we'll go to about 70% where we want it to come down to the bottom down here. So 70% through the animation, I want to say, give it a transform property where we're going to translate Y and then we're going to translate it by about 700 pixels. So that's going to bring it down by about 700 pixels, right? So it was at minus 400. Now that's going to add 700 pixels to this. So it's going to be 300 pixels from the top. Make sense? And then when it gets to 100%, I want it just to go back up a little bit. So we're getting that bounce effect. It's going to go boom and then go back up at the end. All right. So at 100%, we'll say transform again. And this time, translate Y to about 650 pixels. That's just going to bring it up by 50 pixels. That's all it's going to do. Now all we need to do is apply this animation to this pop-up. So I'm going to say animation is going to be drop. Then it's going to take about 0.5 seconds. I'm going to give it the ease for the timing function. And then I'm going to set it to forwards so that it stays there at the end. Okay, so if we take a look at that again, I'll refresh. You can see now it's coming down. Got that little bounce effect just before it you know, goes stable. And that looks pretty cool. Okay, I want to do one more thing. I want to just give this an opacity to begin with of zero. All right, and then at the end, I want to give it an opacity of one. So as well as dropping, it's going to fade in as well. And it just looks a little nicer. So we'll say opacity one at the end. Save that and see what it does. And now it just kind of fades in as well, which is quite nice. All right, pretty cool. So that is how we make a nice little pop up using keyframes. I want to show you one more thing uh, just for the hell of it. I probably wouldn't do this on your website, but we're just going to give it this kind of swing effect where the pop-up comes down, stays there for a second or two, and then it will swing down using this as the origin, okay? So let's create another keyframes animation. We'll say at keyframes again, and we'll call this swing. And what we're gonna do this time is say at 0%, we're gonna transform this so that we're gonna translate it by Y 
to be 650 pixels. Now, we have to do that because I don't want the translate property, the transform property rather, to override anything we've done previously. So although this is still staying at 650 pixels throughout all these different transitions down here, these different states rather, uh, I still have to explicitly say it so that it doesn't override this one down here, okay? If I left this out and just used a rotate uh, transform, which I'm gonna do in a second, then it would override this and get rid of the translate Y. So I have to explicitly put that in each state, okay? So that it's always translated by 650 pixels. Cool, I hope that makes sense. Right, the next thing I'm gonna do is rotate it, and this is where we're gonna get the swing effect. So rotate Z because that's gonna swing it downwards this way because the Z axis goes into the page, it like skewers the page, right? And it's gonna rotate around that. So rotate Z to begin with, it's gonna be zero degrees, right? And then what we'll do is say at about 40%, so just under halfway through, we're gonna need this thing again, because like I say, we pop that through in every state so that it doesn't override the previous one. And then we're gonna set the rotate Z to be around about 90 degrees. So round about straight down here, okay? And then after that, at about 70%, so towards the end, we want it to swing back a little bit because we want to make it look natural and just swing a little at the end, okay? So instead of just swinging here and stopping there, which looks a little unnatural, we want it to swing, go further than it should, and come back a little like that. So at 70%, we're gonna bring it back in. We're gonna use that transform again, just to keep that steady. And then we're gonna say rotate, Z again, and this time we'll say about 70 degrees. So we've swung from zero to begin with, down to 90, and then bringing it back into 70. And then I wanna do one more at 100%, and I'm gonna use that transform once more, and then say rotate Z, and this time we'll say 75 degrees. Just a tiny little uh, last swing, so it's gonna go like that, and just steady on right at the bottom, okay? Cool, so there's our keyframes defined. Now we just need to apply this animation to this as well. So we know how to chain these animations together now. We just put a little comma right there, and let's scoot this in a little bit. Now the second animation is called swing. I want this to take about two seconds, a little longer, because it's gonna be a little slower than the other animation. And I also want there to be, de uh, be a delay on this animation, because I don't want it to happen straight away as it comes down. I want it to come down, stay there for a minute or so, well, not a minute, but a few seconds, and then swing down. So let's put a little delay of around about three seconds on this. That should probably do. Then we're gonna give it an easing timing function so it looks a little more natural. And then we're also gonna say forwards so that it stays at the end, right? Now check this out. That doesn't look natural because it's kind of swinging from this point right here. Now we don't want that. We want it to swing from this point right here. So how can we tell CSS to do that for us? Well, we use the transform origin property. Now the transform origin property basically says at what kind of um, origin we want to swing around or rotate around, okay? So right now, by default, it's going through the center. The skew is going through the center and we're rotating about that point, which is why we're getting this weird rotate effect. But we, if you look at this, want the rotate point to be here so that it swings down, yeah? So we can set that by using the transform origin property. So let's come up here onto this um, element and we'll say transform hyphen origin. And then we want it to be about 10 pixels across and 10 pixels down, which is roughly there. And check this out now. This looks a little bit better. Yeah, it's going off the screen, but if I make this full screen and refresh, then it's probably gonna look a little better. All right, there we go. So we've got the uh, the animation coming down and then swinging at the end. Pretty cool, right? So there we go, guys. That is how we make a pop-up in CSS animations. Any questions, feel free to leave those down below. Otherwise, I'm gonna see you in the very next tutorial.